Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Emily and I talk a lot about Salesforce and Salesforce related products. Now, it's no secret if you've been around my channel for even just a little bit that I really like certifications. I think that they're a great way to show that you have some knowledge in a certain area. Now, they are not a replacement for experience, but not in just the Salesforce ecosystem, but also outside in the general IT ecosystem, certifications can really be a foot in the door to a great IT career. I know that there are many certifications that you could get. As far as IT goes, there's probably endless certifications that you can go. Now, I wanted to create a video going over some of my top hacks for certifications, not just Salesforce certifications, but all IT certifications. So let's go ahead and jump into this list. It's pretty exhaustive. They're all hacks, but first, no dumps. Let's, let's just cut that out right now. Stop using dumps. You need to learn the information for your job. If you use dumps, you'll show that you're bad at your job. Um, that's kind of my spiel on dumps. Just don't, just learn the information so that you can be better at your job. That's it. Okay, first one is going to be using live lo-fi music or live jazz music. So I've been actually using this method and this hack since high school. So what this hack is all about, um, on YouTube you can search for live lo-fi, live jazz, and you're gonna wanna go to a live stream on YouTube, plug in your headphones or use your TV to do that. The channels I know is like calm, relaxing music it might be a channel. Uh, lo-fi girl is super popular for this. But essentially what it is, is it's like non-lyric music Music. It's just some like either jazz music or some type of calming music that's I, like I don't know what to, how to call it how to call lo-fi as a category uh, but it's just a type of music that it's pretty general <laughs> that is neither super positive neither super negative music as far as like the tonalities go and the chords go but um, the key here is that one it doesn't have any lyrics to it's live. So you can see that in the live chat, you can see that other people are studying. And so I think it's a really great way to use a method called body doubling, where you, it's like you kind of have a study partner, but you don't really have a study partner. So you're able to, I don't know, it kind of gets my mind into a greater focus. So number two is going to be timers. I use this a lot. There's a method called the Pomodoro method, where you work for 25 minutes and then you take a five minute break. Then you do another 25 minutes and then you take a break. Now, I I don't necessarily think that 25 is great or bad. I'm pretty neutral on it actually, but I do think that using timers is really great to trick your brain into doing it. So like this isn't even just for IT studying or certification studying. I'll use this for tasks that I don't really want to do. Like one thing I really don't want to do right now is organize my pantry. Like it's bad. Like there's stuff all over the floor. There's like, there's no organization to it. But if I can commit to doing 15 minutes a day of like, hey, I'm just gonna work on it for like 15 minutes and then I'm done for today, then my brain is like, oh, that's a doable. We can do this for 15 minutes. We do this for 20 minutes. That is good. One thing I'm also really behind on are my LinkedIn messages and my LinkedIn requests. Like I can do that for 20 minutes a day. I can't go through all of them because it'll take hours to go through all of them, but I can do it for 20 minutes a day and then we'll see how we're doing. <laughs> and then maybe we increase it, but you can do something for 20 minutes. You can study for 20 minutes. You turn on your phone to do not disturb. Uh, you can put on some music for 20 minutes and then study for it. Number three is going to be studying on your walks. Now, I happen to live in an area that is really great for walks and I can listen to a YouTube video while I'm studying. I can listen to a Udemy course or a LinkedIn learning course and while I'm walking and I can input that information. And I also, I don't necessarily always do this outside, but I also have like a walking pad that you could read from if you're reading from like a laptop. You could use a treadmill at the gym. You could use an iPad for that. You could use your phone. You could go on a walk somewhere. I do really like the idea of getting fresh air, even though it's really cold right now <laughs> where I live. Um, I'll try to put like a picture where like I typically walk as so you can see like the view. It's a really nice view pretty much anywhere you go <laughs> in Utah, but I really like to go on walks and listen to stuff. It's a really great way a lot of times it's pretty quiet when you're going on a walk, go to the park and listen. Um, however you want to do it, just get out there, start walking. It's great for your mental health. It's great for your physical health. It's great to study while you're walking. All right, number four is going to be using a Chrome reader. A lot of the materials that I use when I'm studying for certifications are going to be different like blog articles. If you're familiar with Salesforce, you'll know about Trailhead. It's like written down materials that like you need to know this information. I hate just like 
sitting down and reading it. I am a very busy body. I need to be doing something while I'm doing that. So what I'll do is I have a Chrome extension in my Chrome browser called Natural Reader. There's tons of them. I'll try and link Natural Reader down below because I know I'll get comments about it. But Natural Reader is a great way for you to stay engaged with the information, listen to the information while you're doing something else, or you were just listening to it and reading along, or you're doing something fun while you're doing that. This leads me into number five. Uh, number five is going to be doing a game while you are studying. I'm not talking like League of Legends where you need to be super engaged with it and you need to be on cons with your teams, but I'm thinking games like Animal Crossing or Stardew Valley or Candy Crush, some of those that you can listen to stuff like a Udemy course, you can listen to a a uh, Chrome extension reader that's very like monotonous uh, sounding thing, but you can do that while you're playing um, easy to play game and you can understand that. I also like that for audiobooks. I'm a big Stardew Valley fan. I do play, I don't play League of Legends, but I play a very similar game and that's not great for studying. I've tried it before and it's really bad. So don't, don't do that one. All right, number six is going to be studying while you're doing monotonous tasks. This is kind of along the same lines of listening while you're actually doing something, like listening while you're doing a walk, listening while you are playing a, an easy game to play. Um, I really like listening while I am either folding laundry or doing the dishes. You don't need a lot of brain power to do your dishes or to do laundry um, and fold laundry. So those are easy ones where you can say, hey, I am going to listen while I do this task that already needs to be done. So why don't I uh, learn something while I'm doing it? And it also, I, I don't know why, but I, when I'm on the exam, I think back to what I was doing while I was learning that information that I'm being tested on. And so I don't know why, but it just helps me understand it a little bit better. And I can like close my eyes and think back to when I was doing the dishes or I was on a walk and then it helps me remember some of the information and recall it better. Okay, number seven is going to be a memory palace. And this is another one that I've been using for a very long time. I've been using it since high school. This one is shown on, what show was it that I learned this on? I think it was Sherlock Holmes, like the new one with Benedict Cumberbatch. I think that's his name, but if I just butchered that, that was probably really funny. Essentially what you do is that you think back into your mind, you create this fictional house, or maybe it's a real house, uh, but you go and you place certain pieces of information within that house. So one thing that comes to mind when I am going back to my memory palace, I don't know why I remember this so long, long later. It's been at least 12 years since I remember this, but I remember in my memory palace, if you walk into the kitchen, um, I was supposed to remember that my aunt was visiting and she had a yellow toothbrush that she needed to <laughs> take home with her. And I still remember that she has a yellow toothbrush that is in my memory palace. It's in the same spot as the kitchen at the house that I was at that time where it was. And it's really great for remembering different pieces of information. So if you essentially just think of a house and then um, place certain pieces of information within that house, and then you can go back into your memory house, mind palace, and recall that information pretty easily. I mean, the fact that I, 12 to 15 years later, I can still remember that my aunt has a yellow toothbrush sitting on the counter by the toaster that she needs to take home with her. Like that's kind of crazy, which is not like a certification example, but you can use it for certifications. Okay, another one, this one is not necessarily a hack, but you should recall the information every day. So let's say you have two weeks to study for the certification. I know some colleges you have uh, certifications and that's like what the whole class is about, about getting an IT certification, like a CompTIA. What you should do is you should recall that piece of information every single day, uh, just so then it can be solidified in your mind. So let's say you have two weeks to study. You should either take notes or you should recall what you studied, if it's in written material or, you don't have to go through all of the video if you're doing video, but what I would do is I would write down some of the key pieces of information that you learned and then at least just like look at it every day and read it every day. So that way you can go back and you can remember like this piece of functionality is incompatible with this piece of functionality or you need to have this piece of functionality before you can do this. You need to turn this on before you can turn that on. You need to uh, set the permissions before you put it live into production. You need to put everything into a change set and do a test deployment before you deploy it to production. That kind of thing. So just make sure that you are writing down 
just simple concepts uh, as you're studying and then go back and review those every single day so then they are stuck in your mind. And this works best over a long time. I think there's a statistic out there. You need to remember it or visit something nine times before you like actually internalize it. So just remember that where you need to. I don't even know if it's nine times, but just go back and review some of the same concepts. All right, number nine, this is gonna sound really simple, but set do not disturb on your phone and, and all of your devices. <laughs> um, there's lots of times where you are trying to get in the zone for studying. And I definitely believe that there's like a study zone that you can get into, but make sure that you are not getting any notifications from whatever you're trying to get notifications from typically. So like Instagram, TikTok, if you're playing games, you don't wanna be getting Discord notifications while you are studying because then you're gonna get distracted and then you're gonna play games and then it's gonna be 2 a.m. And I've definitely been there, but make sure that you set do not disturb. You can, I know on Apple, I'm not sure if on Android, but on Apple, you can have certain people that can reach you if they need to. So for me, it'd probably be my mother-in-law who watches my kids a lot, who's really awesome. Thank you, Deanne. And my husband. Other than that, you need to have a do not disturb on. So another hack I have is going somewhere to study. Don't just have it be in your house. So what I like to do, um, I have a really nice car and I really like driving it, it's a Tesla. Um, we recently just got it. But <laughs> what I like to do is I like to go and I like to drive and I like to go park somewhere for like 25 minutes. There's like a fireplace mode, which is really great because it's winter here. You can put on fireplace mode and really get in the zone of studying. And then every 25 minutes or so, go drive your car somewhere else. This could also be true of studying in different locations, uh, studying at a library, studying at a coffee shop. These are all really useful. If you're studying at home, there's a lot of distractions that you can get at home. But if you're studying at a coffee shop, you've got the music going that is just like chill music, or maybe it's the coffee shop music, or it's just quiet at the library. You got Do Not Disturb on and you're just there to study. I find that to be really useful. Um, I've used that throughout like from high school till now I still use that but then if you need to change up your location or if you need to get your body moving that's a great way to do that is just drive somewhere else. Number 11 we're going to come out to the rounding out of this list but number 11 is going to be having an accountability partner. Now I recommend this to be someone who is in a similar career path to you who's fairly similar to you so then you can say hey I studied this much today and have like daily check-ins or weekly check-ins whatever makes sense for the certification that you're getting. I recommend that you have a classmate or a co-worker or someone who's possibly working on the same certification and you can say hey I finished up this little bit of my thing. Or I finished up this little bit of studying. I did this amount of time of studying. I did this practice test today that you're able to do that via like text or LinkedIn message. I'm sure if you were to post on LinkedIn that you are looking for a certification accountability partner that you would really be able to find someone pretty quickly or you could go out and go looking for one. Number 12 is going to be using all learning methods. So what I mean by this, some people are visual learners, some people are auditory learners, some people are kinesthetic learners. Um, I would recommend using all of these actually to help solidify a lot of the information. So what I like to do, I'm personally, I am an auditory learner. If I can hear it, then typically I can understand the information. That's why I have so many auditory things. You want to listen while you do stuff and you could use like a Chrome extension, but listen to it. You can also watch it. So I recommend watching YouTube videos of people like actually doing the thing. So if you are learning about Salesforce Experience Cloud and you're trying to get that certification, I would look at the certain concepts that you need to learn to pass that certification. And then I would search for that on YouTube or shadow someone who's doing that. That's a really great way. If you are a kinesthetic learner, someone who has to learn by doing it, I know that you can get a lot of free developer orgs through Salesforce. You can also do developer orgs through other organizations that have it to be able to uh, learn that information while you're doing it. I know another one that I've used it for is like Tableau certifications. You can get a free edition of Tableau. You can get a free edition of probably Power BI. Um, I'm not sure about what else, but look to see if those are out there, if that's your learning method. But again, I recommend using all three of these to really solidify that information. But that is going to be the end of my certification hacks for this video. If you have any more, I would love to hear them down below what you use, what your favorite certification hacks are. Um, again, don't use dumps. You 
please don't. <laughs> They're the worst. They're probably always wrong. But I hope that you found this video helpful. If you did, be sure to give it a like, subscribe. You can connect with me on LinkedIn at Emily Call MBA. You check out my certification prep courses down below in the description. They're on Salesforce Upskill, Udemy Business, and LinkedIn Learning. So feel free to check those out there. Thank you so much. I'll catch you guys in the next one.